Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my development vlog, or the re-uploading of the first episode of my development vlog, because the first one was pretty bad. Uh, my name is Jonathan Hale. I am a student in college, currently going to school for game design, and this is the beginning of the documentation of my new game. So, to give some context here, I am sort of traveling back in time about a week to the older build of my game. Um, luckily, I backed it up, but I just wanted to kind of re-record things and give a better explanation of what I'm doing and a better showcase, uh, with less stumbling and less uh, meandering. So what is my game? What I'm trying to make here is a game called Sim Solver. And what I want to do, essentially, is create a sort of puzzle game with this interaction system that I found in the Unreal Marketplace. So I have not created the interaction system. That is all from someone else. But what I have done is I've integrated it into everything I have made, and I'm going to use it uh, to build my levels. Because I'm not a programmer. What I enjoy doing is level design, and just kind of using this system is going to allow me to work a lot faster without thinking so much about the coding and technical aspects. So what I want to showcase here is kind of the things that I've built myself and just kind of give you a general rundown. So this is everything I've done. So basically imagine that these are going to be viruses in the game and your job is to get into the simulation and hunt them down. So I have set up a general UI here that displays um, how many viruses there are on the map and then a countdown timer. And when you shoot a target, obviously it breaks. So you kind of go through the map, you hunt down the targets, and I've created all this so far. So like the weapon, um, the bullet physics, kind of how it looks, the breaking apart of the weapon, or not the weapon, the um, targets, general movement, um, obviously the UI, I have like a pause screen that will allow you to reload the simulation whenever you want right now. And then if you... Um, uh, where is the last one? Hold on. I don't know where my last target is. And I was planning on making this a lot more um, strategic. So give me a second. There it is. And so when you eradicate all the viruses, you can either retry the level again if you want to for whatever reason, or move on to the next one. And I've built in a, um, a system that allows me to have like a universal next level. And so wherever you are in the game, so you could be on level 6, it's always going to know how to take you to that next level, which is something my previous game lacked. And it was a huge issue, and it was just a really messy like transition to levels. So what I've built is like an array... And um, it's going to just allow the player to, or allow the game to always know where the player is at in the game. So if I go in to the game mode here, hold on. Actually, I have to go into my game instance to kind of show you how I did that. And so here we go. So we have a level array here. Uh, basically, you go. If I can find it, here we go. So right now there's only two levels, and so it kind of, it's starting at like the basic level, and then it can move you on to the next one. Um, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but it, it just works. It's something I'm excited about. It was like my big accomplishment for the beginning of this game. Now, that alone, hunting down viruses in a blank map, pretty boring, right? So... <clears throat> what I am doing here is I'm using this interaction system, and it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but I've integrated in with all of my programming already, or coding, honestly, like I said, not good at this stuff, don't really know what you call it, but I use blueprints in Unreal, and I've integrated in to work with my player character, so, oh, of course it's not working, hold on, we're just going to pretend like that didn't happen, I promise it does work. Just not right now. Okay. So what I can do is pick up pretty much anything. And uh, I want all the levels in my game to have any object you think you should be able to pick up, I want you to be able to pick up. 
and then so here they have things where you can like place it in here and it will um, that can open a door or something and I've made it so like I've worked uh, my bullet physics in with their destructible objects so I can use their destructive system to break stuff or like have like these trees they break if I shoot them and I just kind of went in there and I added their they're like kind of logic into my bullets, so it just kind of all works together real nice. And over here, I have a display of how I can take these systems and put it into pretty much any asset. So, here we go, uh, <laughs> all placeholder stuff. So like this is, let's like this platform, all right? You step on it and it goes down. So hypothetically, I could like have you have to hunt down like one of these blocks and then you place the block on the platform and it goes down or maybe it comes up actually and then there's like a little jumping puzzle to get to one of the viruses and then you break it and then that's one out of four done which that wasn't a virus that was something else I was working on there you go or I have it so like a button just press that button and it does the same thing as um, the uh, pressure plate and I like so these two I have them linked up to the same pressure plate so if you press the button or you use the pressure plate it still does the same thing and goes down or like I can make any object interactable this is a little glitchy but you can see I can pick it up interact with it do whatever I want um, slot it into this and then in, like uh, you kind of get the general idea uh, I can We'll basically be able to create any sort of puzzle I really want to. Just like simplistic jumping or um, like ba just basic puzzles. I uh, think portal, but probably not as good. Uh, and then for the levels, I'm framing it as simulations. So it's going to allow me to use whatever assets I want. So I can have you jumping from a medieval setting, different art styles, whatever. Mainly because... I need a lot of assets. I don't have the time to create all the assets. I know a little bit of 3D modeling, but this will just allow me to jump from whatever kind of setting I want, use whatever free assets I could find, and kind of an excuse to have an inco in cohesive art style. I haven't done any of that yet, but that's sort of the plan. And before I just end things, I kind of want to show you all like the the programming that's already kind of gone into everything. So this is mostly my stuff, a little bit of the interaction system weaved in there. This is what took so long. So like this, like the interaction system. But I sit there and I had to swap a lot of pieces out to be able to work with what I've already made. And you go into here. Just all these things I had to go in and tweak just to get working with my stuff. So it took a little while and a lot of trial and error broke the game a few times so that's okay we have like my game mode just trying to like getting the UI stuff working all of that the timer like how the targets work like my bullets the rifle the shooting logic this is all from me or like my bullets game instance level array go into like UI, we have all the UI stuff, end screen, all this, just so much fun stuff, and just more, it's like the making the buttons work, all that functionality, and so on, you get the point. Uh, I think I'm probably just rambling at this point, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, the quality on these videos should be at least this good or a little bit better i'm learning how to record stuff but yeah so thank you for tuning in uh i should have another one up here pretty soon because i'm already about a week ahead of this so i've already kind of created a lot of other stuff i just am in an older build to show you this and yeah so thank you and see you next time